Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today we are here to set up my August TBR. Okay, first I want to apologize if the lighting is really bad or the setup is kind of wonky. Part of my ring light that actually holds my camera is busted and so I could no longer use my ring light. I'm going to have to get a new one and until that can happen, I kind of had to create a new little setup. So you are just sitting on a little tripod and I don't have like any lighting directly in front of me right now. So it might be a little bit of a mess, but I'm going to try to play around with it and hopefully there's not too terribly much of a difference. I think it's kind of appropriate that this is happening because I knew that my TBR for August was already going to be a little bit interesting and chaotic because not only am I going to do the typical challenge pulls and then play my TBR game for you all today, but I will also be participating in two readathons in the month of August. The first is the Around the World readathon that is hosted by Brianna over at Four Paws in a Book. I will be sure to leave her channel and the announcement video down below if you are interested in participating yourself. And of course, I will also be participating in the Autumn Equinox for the Magical Readathon hosted by G over at Book Roast. Now, luckily, all of the prompts for the Autumn Equinox have already been released, and so I can kind of use those to guide my TBR in some way. But the the Around the World readathon prompts will not be released in advance. They are going to be released as we go. So I'm going to have to hope that the books that I pull for the challenges and my TBR prompts and everything like that are going to work well with that readathon or at the very least that I can fit them in for the magical readathon if I already have things on my TBR that won't work for the Around the World readathon. Hopefully I'm not going to need to add too terribly many books to my TBR. So it's going to be a weird and interesting month. Now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and do a quick recap to see how I did with my TBR in July. So starting with the challenge prompts that I pulled, the first challenge prompt that I pulled was to read the next book in the Bromance Book Club series by Alyssa K. Adams. Technically this was supposed to be Undercover Bromance which is book number two. I ultimately did read a book in the Bromance Book Club series however it was not book number two. I picked a different book for a very specific reason. One because I already had it and two because I was going to do a vlog that could feature this book. I'm not going to say much more about it because it's going to probably spoil the vlog which will be up after this TBR video goes out. So just know that I ultimately did end up satisfying this challenge just not with the original book that I was planning to read for it. Challenge number Number two was to read The Atlas Paradox. I did attempt to read The Atlas Paradox in July and I have since decided to DNF it so I technically completed the challenge because I did attempt to read it and I will not be continuing with that series. And then challenge number three was to read Educated by Tara Westover. I have this in my challenge cup for a few reasons primarily because it satisfied a lot of challenges. I have not yet read that in July. Now as I'm filming this it's still pretty early on in the month I would say it's only July 22nd so I have over a week left in order to complete my July TBR. Will I get to Educated by Tara Westover? I don't know. I did try to start it and it wasn't really doing it for me. I'm not a big nonfiction girly. I'm just not. This one really appealed to me. It really sounded interesting and so it's been on my radar on my TBR for a really long time and I was very excited to read it and it's one of the reasons why I wanted it to satisfy so many challenge prompts but when I went to read it and start it, it just was not what I was looking for. So I'm not going to outright say right off the bat that I'm not going to read it. It's likely that I will not and if I don't, I will either need to roll it over into August or just completely unhaul it from my TBR in general. So we're going to see. If I know what my answer is by the time that I'm editing this video, I will be sure to post an update here down below for you. All right, moving into the TBR game prompts that I pulled. The first prompt that I pulled was to read a mystery thriller. For that, I decided to pick up All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. I did read this in the month of July and I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four stars. Then the next prompt I landed on was to read a true crime. And for that, I read The Phantom Prince, My Life with Ten Buddy by Elizabeth Kendall. I did read this and this is another one that I really enjoyed. Then I landed on the prompt to read a book box selection. For that, I ended up reading The Last Word by Taylor Adams and we're not going to talk about this one. I did read it. I did do a completely full spoiler filled rant review on this in my recent mid-month wrap up. So if you're interested in hearing my spoiler filled thoughts about that, I will be sure to link that video down below. This was one of my most anticipated releases of the year and it did not live up to the hype for me unfortunately, but I did read it so I did satisfy that TBR prompt. And then the final prompt that I actually needed to read a book for was Husband Pick and he selected A Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson. I actually just finished this yesterday and I absolutely love this. I think I'm leaning on a 4.25, 4.5 rating. This is one of the best thrillers that I've read in a really long time. So I'm so happy that I finally got to it. And so obviously I did satisfy this TBR prompt. All right, so everything went really well in July. And I actually think it went better than just satisfying the challenges and my TBR prompts. Because if you'll remember, I was kind of using July as a catch up month. I have a lot of things that have come into me that I was trying to read. And I also ended up reading some of those other books in addition to what was already on my TBR. So I feel pretty good about July and I'm feeling pretty good about August too, even though it's kind of going to be a little bit of a chaotic month. But before 
before we get into the gameplay, of course, I have to go ahead and pull some challenge prompts from this guy. Hopefully they are kind to me. And then once I've pulled the challenges and we go through the gameplay, then I'm going to go through all of the prompts for the magical readathon and what I plan to use to satisfy those prompts. Luckily, a lot of them are very, very vague. And so I don't actually have to pick anything specifically right now. I'm basically going to be able to use any book to satisfy them for the most part. And then the around the world readathon, we're just going to have to play that by ear as the prompts come out. So let's go ahead and get into the challenges and see if they are kind to me. All right, let's see what it is. I think it's upside down. Fly Away by Kristen Hanna. I've actually already read this, so this can go. All right, pulling the next one. Carly Fortune. Okay, so this was actually in here because she was one of the authors that I wanted to try in 2023. I have already read Every Summer After, so I have gone ahead and tried her. So this is another one that I don't need to satisfy anymore because I have already done it. Okay. Husk. Again, I've already read it. I don't need to satisfy it. Apparently I'm doing really well on some of these challenges that I've set for myself, y'all, because I'm reading them without even pulling them from this jar. So eventually we're gonna get to one that I actually do need to satisfy. Stephanie Plum. Okay, perfect. So I actually need to read the next book in the Stephanie Plum series by Jenna Ivanovich. And for me, that's actually going to be 12 Sharp. So if you're not familiar, this follows Stephanie Plum and she's kind of an accidental bounty hunter and she kind of fell into the job and she's not really good at it. So every single book is kind of following her and the shenanigans that happens. Usually one of our cars blows up, things go down. They're just a really fun, good time. Now I am obviously way, 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 way behind in this series. I think at this point it's up to book 30. Will I ever complete this series? Probably not because it's never going to be a priority for me. These are just a good, fun, fast time. So I'm actually very, very pleased that this one was picked because I'm going to get through it really quickly. All right, so that one worked. Let's go ahead and pull another one. Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner. Okay, so I actually have that book here on my physical TBR. This is another one that I had in here because it will satisfy a couple of challenges for me, including I think one from Buzzword Readathon. I'm not entirely sure, but it will definitely satisfy some challenge prompts for me. So I'm excited to go ahead and read this. Susan Meisner has quickly become one of my favorite historical fiction authors. I've only read two of her other stories, but I really, really enjoyed them both. And so I'm excited to go ahead and dive into this one. It says, present day Oxford, England, young American scholar Kendra Van Zandt, eager to pursue her vision of a perfect life, interviews Isabel McFarland Ireland, just when the elderly woman is ready to give up secrets about the war she has kept for decades, beginning with who she really is. What Kendra receives from Isabel is both a gift and a burden, one that will test her convictions and her heart. Then 1940s England, as Hitler wages an unprecedented war against London civilian population, hundreds of thousands of children are evacuated to foster homes in the rural countryside. But even as 15-year-old Emmy Downtree and her much younger sister Julia find refuge in a charming Cotswold cottage, Emmy's burning ambition to return to the city and apprentice with a fashion designer pits her against Julia's profound need for her sister's presence. Acting at Cross purposes just as the Luftwaffe rains down its terrible destruction, the sisters are cruelly separated and their lives are transformed. So it sounds like one of these sisters could potentially be Isabel McFarland in the present day. I don't know. I'm totally here for it. I love historical fictions that feature a past and present timeline. I always love seeing how they come together. And like I said, I really enjoyed Susan Meisner in the past. I trust her completely. And I think that this is going to be a very, very strong historical fiction. All right, let's go ahead and pull one more. Ooh, okay, this means I need to read the next book in the Tracy Crosswhite series by Robert Dugoni. That is a detective fiction series by Robert Dugoni, and I really, really enjoy it. I think it is probably one of the best detective fiction series that I've ever read. And even though I'm really moving away from detective fiction, this one has consistently kept me interested. Tracy Crosswhite is a female detective in the Seattle area, and it is about her and her life and solving crime. I really enjoyed the Tracy Crosswhite series, Robert Dugoni's writing. I would absolutely be willing to read more from Robert Dugoni outside of this series, but I'm certainly happy to continue it in August. I think I'm on book five or book six. I will, of course, be sure to pop it up here once I know for sure what I'm reading. All right, so once we got through all of the ones that I'd already completed and satisfied, I ended up with three challenges that I'm pretty happy with. So now that those are out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. All right, everybody, it is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. The board should be exactly as it was after the last round. We're gonna do the standard six draws and hope that the board is kind to me, especially since I will be doing a couple of readathons in the month of August. So we're gonna see. Let's go ahead and start with draw number one. All right, so number six in yellow, I currently only have one active yellow pawn, so I'm gonna have to turn the board and we will go ahead and move him. All right, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Favorite booktuber recommendation. All right, my first draw was the number six and the color yellow, and I landed on the prompt to read a recommendation from my favorite booktuber. And so for this, of course, I had to choose Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. She's not only one of my favorite booktubers, but she's actually a personal friend of mine. We do buddy reads all the time. I've met her in person, and she and I have very similar reading tastes in a lot of ways, 
but then also we have disparate rating tastes in a lot of ways. Like some books that she's rated five stars, I have really, really disliked and I think vice versa. So I knew for sure that I was going to be able to find something that she highly recommends that is currently on my radar or my TBR. And I definitely did find the perfect option. And so for this prompt, I've selected You Were There Too by Colleen Oakley. So it was really Sarah's rave review of this book that put Colleen Oakley on my radar. She's not really an author that I see talked about really in the online bookish community, but I had heard things here and there. But after Sarah read this book, she was really put on my radar. And then I started reading the synopses of some of her other books and they just sounded so incredibly unique and interesting. Sarah read this, I believe in the last couple of years and she really loved it. She rated it five stars, of course. And since this is already on my physical TBR and not only that, but Colleen Oakley is definitely an author on my list to try in 2023, I could not have picked a better book for this prompt. It says Mia Graydon's life looks picket fence perfect. She has the house, her loving husband and dreams of starting a family. She has other dreams too, unexplained recurring ones starring the same man. Still, she doesn't think much of them until a relocation to small town Pennsylvania brings her face to face with a stranger she has been dreaming about for years. And this man harbors a jaw dropping secret of his own. He's been dreaming of her too. Determined to understand Mia and this not so stranger search for answers. But when diving into their past begins to unravel her life in the present, Mia emerges with a single question. What if? So I have no idea what Mia's relationship or dynamic with this man is going to be. If it's going to be some type of love story between them, I'm not sure because she is a married person and she wants to start a family with the person that she's with. So obviously she loves him. I'm hoping that there's not going to be like fair or cheating or anything like that. I don't think so. I think that this is going to be a book on a deeper level. All I know is that this sounds phenomenal. I have a feeling that it's going to be harder hitting, which is absolutely what I'm looking for in my contemporary stories. And there's definitely somewhat of a speculative twist to this. And I'm very, very interested to see what Colleen Oakley does in this. So I am absolutely hyped to read this one in August. Okay, draw number two. All right, so I drew a 10 and that means I can either move backwards one or forwards 10. And I basically make that choice based on what it's going to land on. So if I move this guy one backwards, it would be pet pick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, red on the cover. And then that guy over there, if I move him backwards one, it's going to land on foreign country. And if I move him forward 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, book box. I think I'm actually going to do foreign country. And that is because for the Around the World readathon, literally all the prompts are going to be based kind of around foreign countries and so I think I can easily satisfy this prompt so that's what we're going to do let me flip the board so we are going to move this guy backwards one and land on a foreign country all right next I drew a number 10 and the color green and this landed me on the prompt to read a book set in a foreign country and I'm not going to 100% decide on what I'm reading for this prompt because like I said I think I'm going to be able to find a book that will easily satisfy this prompt but as well as something for the around the world readathon so I don't really want to settle on something right now However, if all else fails, I do know that I can use Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner to satisfy this because this is set in Oxford, England. So at the very least, I will certainly be able to use this. So we're going to go ahead and go with this for right now, but I have a feeling that I'm going to use another book for the Around the World Readathon to satisfy one of those prompts as well as this prompt. All right, draw number three. All right, I drew a nine and blue. I have two active blue pawns on the board. Let me go ahead and once again, flip the board so we can see where they may land. All right, sorry if there was a drastic lighting change. I just ended up closing my blinds because the sun was not working with me and turned on my photo lights. So it probably looks pretty different. All right, we were going to see where I moved my blue pawn. So if I moved him nine, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I cannot move him because that would boot this red. So one, two, three, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Most recent purchase. Then I drew the number nine and the color blue, and this landed me on the prompt to read my most recent purchase. So my most recent purchases have actually all been pre-orders, so I can't actually read those. And so going back a little ways, that would probably be my book of the month box for July. So in that box, I have the newest release from Riley Sager called The Only One Left. I also have Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood, as well as Dark Corners by Megan Golden. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and select Dark Corners for this prompt. And the reason is, is because I already have the Riley Sager and Allie Hazelwood book on hold at my library. I have about 15 weeks to wait for both of those. So those are certainly not going to come my way in August. And since I already have them on hold, I tried to find them on script and I couldn't. So my only other option would be to go get an audible credit for them. And I don't think I want to do that since they're already on hold. I'm going to leave them on hold at my library, but I don't have dark corners by Megan Golden on hold because it hasn't actually come out yet. I don't even have the availability to put it on hold at my library that comes out on August 8th. So it's going to come out at the perfect time to read it for this TBR. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is probably just use an audible credit 
or see if I can find it on script at that time when it comes out. So that is what I'm going to use to satisfy this prompt. I do know that it follows the same main character from Night Swim. Her name is Rachel Crawl. So let me just read to you what this is about really quickly. Terrence Bailey is about to be released from prison for breaking and entering, though investigators have long suspected him in the murders of six women. As his freedom approaches, Bailey gets a surprise visit from Madison Logan, a hot young influencer with a huge social media following. Hours later, Madison disappears and police suspect she's been kidnapped or worse. Is Madison's disappearance connected to her visit to Bailey? Why was she visiting him in the first place? When they hit a wall in the investigation, the FBI reluctantly asks for Rachel's help in finding the missing influencer. Madison seems only to exist on social media. She has no family, no friends, and other than in her posts, most people have never seen her. So who is she really? Using a fake Instagram account, Rachel Crawl goes undercover to BuzzCon, a popular influencer conference where she discovers a world of fierce rivalry that may have turned lethal. When police find the body of a woman with a tattoo of a snake eating its tail, the FBI must consider a chilling possibility. Bailey has an accomplice on the outside and a dangerous obsession with influencers, including Rachel Crawl herself. Suddenly, a target of a monster hiding in plain sight, Rachel is forced to confront the very real dangers that lurk in the dark corners of the internet. So that sounds absolutely fascinating. We have a potential killer that's going to go after our main character, but it also sounds like this Instagram influencer is hiding a lot of secrets. So who knows? I'm not sure, but I am 100% here for it. I will certainly be doing my best to get to this in August as long as I can get my hands on the audiobook for it. Draw number four. All right, so now I'm adding a draw to this game. Fortunately and unfortunately, I don't really have very many pawns in start anymore. So unless I draw a blue or a yellow, this isn't really going to help me all that much. I'll just have to move forward to and draw again. So let's see what color I get. All right, we got green. However, I'm going to move this guy too and land on a free space. So I ended up not needing to choose a book for that, which is phenomenal. I don't have to add anything onto my TBR for that one. All right, my next draw was the number two and the color green, and I was luckily able to go ahead and move a green pawn onto a free space. So I didn't actually have to add an additional book onto my TBR for this one. Let's go ahead and move right on into draw number five. All right, so this is a backwards movement. So if I move this guy backwards four, one, two, three, four, red on the cover, which is a prompt that one of my green pawns would have landed on earlier. If I move that guy back four, one, two, three, four, multiple POVs. I feel like I'm trying to be as general as possible as I can be with the prompts this time because I don't know what I'm going to need for the Around the World readathon. So I think that just to be safe, even though a lot of the books that I read do feature multiple POVs, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just move this guy back one, two, three, four, and find a book with red on the cover. All right, next I drew the number four and the color red. And for this one, I landed on the prompt to read a book with red on the cover. And I was actually looking through all of my physically owned TBR books and I do not have a lot of red books. So out of the ones that were truly, truly red that had a lot of red on the cover, the one that I've decided to go with is Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum. Brendan Slocum came on my radar because he has a new release coming out. And I talked about it in one of my new release videos. And I just loved the concept of it because it's not something that I've ever heard covered. Brendan Slocum seems like he writes kind of of literary mysteries of some type that all involve classical music in some capacity. And so I was really interested in his newest release, but I thought I should go ahead and read one of his backlist first. And so that's why I ended up picking up the violin conspiracy from Book Outlet. So it says, growing up black in rural North Carolina, Ray McMillian's life is already mapped out. If he's lucky, he'll get a job at the hospital cafeteria. If he's extra lucky, he'll earn more than minimum wage. But Ray has a gift and a dream. He's determined to become a world-class professional violinist and nothing will stand in his way. Not his mother who wants him to stop making such a racket, not the fact that he can't afford a violin suitable to his talent, not even the racism inherent in the world of classical music. When he discovers that his great-great-grandfather's beat-up old fiddle is actually a priceless Stradivarius, all his dreams suddenly seem within reach. Together, Ray and his violin take the world by storm, but on the eve of the renowned and cutthroat Tchaikovsky competition, the Olympics of classical music, the violin is stolen. A ransom note for five million dollars left in its place. Ray will have to piece together the clues to recover his treasured Strad before it is too late. With the descendants of the man who once enslaved Ray's great-great-grandfather asserting that the instrument is rightfully theirs, and with his family staking their own claim, Ray doesn't know who he can trust or whether he will ever see his beloved violin again. So that sounds absolutely phenomenal. This definitely has like a mystery thriller aspect to it, but I also think that it's going to be on the more literary side because of the subject matter that it deals with. So I'm very much looking forward to getting into this. Like I said, I've never read anything by this author, but the synopses of his book sounds fascinating. So we're going to go with this one for the color red. All right, and then this should be the sixth and final draw.
All right, we drew red again, and this time he gets to move forward eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Shortest book on TBR. Ooh, interesting. And that guy over there, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Color. So that would be where I used a random color generator to select a color, and I would have to choose a cover based on that color. I I think I'm gonna go ahead and see what the shortest book on my TBR is. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, then I drew the number eight in the color red and that landed me on the prompt to read the shortest book on my TBR. So I went to Goodreads and I sorted by page count. And the first one that came up is actually a Colleen Hoover novella that I can't quite read yet because I haven't read the first book or two that comes before that novella. So the next book that's considered the shortest on my TBR is Signal Fires by Danny Shapiro. So I'm actually kind of nervous about how short it is. It's only 220 pages. And I'm very wary about stories like these because they typically tend to be very fast paced without the emotional depth and complex character dynamics that I typically go for. But I'm going to trust Danny Shapiro. And the reason I say that is because I know her through a podcast that she has. I think it's called Family Secret. And it's where she literally talks to people about some deeply troubling and disturbing family secrets that they unearth because she herself has actually had a similar experience. She wrote her entire like autobiography memoir about her own experience with that. And because of her own personal experiences and the podcast, I want to trust that she's going to be able to bring depth to the story even though it is very short. I do believe that this is somewhat historical fiction. Yes, it's set in 1985. It says three teenagers have been drinking. One of them gets behind the wheel of a car and in an instant everything on Division Street changes. Each of their lives and that of Ben Wilf, a doctor who arrives on the scene, is shattered. For the Wilf family, the circumstances of that fatal accident will become the deepest kind of secret, one so dangerous it can never be spoken. On Division Street, time has moved on. When the Shankmans arrive, a young couple expecting a baby boy, it is as if the accident never happened. But when Walt Waldo, the Shankman's brilliant lonely son who marvels at the beauty of the world and has a native ability to find connections in everything, befriends Dr. Wilf, now retired and struggling with his wife's decline, past events come hurtling back in ways no one could have ever foreseen. In Danny Shapiro's first work of fiction in 15 years, she returns to the form that launched her career with a riveting deeply felt novel that examines the ties that bind families together and the secrets that can break them apart. So this actually does have a decent rating on Goodreads. It's got a 3.94. So we're going to see what she can do and I'm very grateful that it is short and that I'm going to be able to get through it very, very quickly. So we're going to go with this one. Oh, and I just realized I lied. That was not the final draw because I drew a two. So I'm drawing seven cards this round. So let's go ahead and move on into draw number seven. All right, well, luckily that final draw was very kind to me because this is not a movement card. This is a card that I can keep on hand and use it to skip a prompt that I do not want to use in the future. This cannot be retroactively applied, however, so I have to decide while I'm making my TBR if I want to skip a prompt. So I'm just going to go ahead and hang on to him and put him with all the other jacks and kings that I've drawn in recent gameplay. And that's it, y'all. Those are the final draws for this round. All right, and the final draw was actually a jack and that is a skip card, so no book is chosen for this and I can kind of hold it to the side for when there's a prompt that I really don't want to satisfy. All right, y'all, that is the brunt of my TBR for the month of August. Now, really quickly, I kind of want to go over with some of my plans for the Magical Readathon. A lot of these prompts are very vague, which I'm grateful for. So we're going to see how much of this already established TBR I can fit in. So for the Autumn Equinox, I am still trying to be a Beastmaster. And in order to go ahead and pass my exams, first, I need to earn an O in Elemental Studies. And for that, I have to read Element of Earth, a book with the word Earth in the title. Now, now, I'm going to kind of cheat just a tad with this because Earth is not technically in the name of the title of this book, but it is the name of the series. So I'm going to try to read Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. That is the first in her Earth Seed series. I actually have to read a book by Octavia E. Butler in order to satisfy a reading challenge prompt. And so it works out perfectly that it would help satisfy the Magical Readathon prompt as well. I have never read an Octavia E. Butler, but from what I understand, her books are typically science fiction and sometimes deal with time in a lot of ways. Oddly enough, this book is actually set in the 2020s, which I find really interesting since we are currently in it. And I think some of this is pretty timely and apt to what we are going through as well. When global climate change and economic crisis leads to social chaos in the early 2020s. California becomes full of dangers from pervasive water shortage to masses of vagabonds who will do anything to live to see another day. 15-year-old Lauren Olamina lives inside a gated community with her preacher father, family, and neighbors, sheltered from the surrounding anarchy. In a society where any vulnerability is a risk, she suffers from hyper-empathy, a debilitating sensitivity to others' pain. Cautious and clear-eyed, Lauren must make her voice heard in order to protect her loved ones from the imminent disasters her small community stubbornly ignores. But what begins as a fight for survival soon leads to something much more, the birth of a new faith and a startling vision of human destiny. This 
This highly acclaimed post-apocalyptic novel of hope and terror from award-winning author Octavia E. Butler pairs well with 1984 or The Handmaid's Tale. So I'm gonna be honest and say I'm a little bit trepidatious about reading a YA dystopian that was written in the early 90s but this book has extremely high ratings. It gets so much praise even from people who are reading it today. It's not normally something that I think I would ever pick up on my own but since it would satisfy a challenge I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot so we'll see what I can do. Then I have to earn a D in animal studies so I have to read three books. In order to earn an O I have to satisfy the prompt of intro to domestic creatures which is a pet pick. So basically I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out some of the books that are on my TBR and have my pet determine what I read first. So I think that's how I'm going to utilize the pet pick. So right now I don't have anything properly selected for this. Then in order to get a Q on my exams I have to read a prompt associated with dragon chicken hatchling and that is to read a debut book and for that I'm actually going to read The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Silkham because I do believe this was his debut. And then to earn the D it is to read a prompt associated with bicorn wolf care. Read a book in two days. So basically I have to pick a book and read it within two days and as I've already mentioned I have at least two very short books on this including Signal Buyers by Danny Shapiro. So I will definitely be able to read that or maybe the Stephanie Plum book in two days or less. So I'm not worried about this one at all. I also have to earn an O in alchemy. The subject is Stone to Copper. Read the first book in a series. And for this I think I'm actually going to read Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is on a list of books that I wanted to read in 2023 because I love Jay Kristoff so much on his own and I absolutely adored The Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman and I kind of wanted to see what they could do with this new YA sci-fi series. I am a little bit nervous, a little bit trepidatious because it is a YA sci-fi and I'm definitely moving so far away from YA even in sci-fi and fantasy and I haven't necessarily heard the best things about the Aurora Rising series so we're going to see. I really don't have very many series on my radar to start at the moment. This was one of the only glaringly obvious ones out there so we're going to see what I can do with it. And then for restoration I have to get up to a Q. So first I have to get an O. Subject is inducing sleep. Start a book before bed. So basically I can take any book that is not already being used to satisfy another prompt and as long as I start it before bed it will count towards this so I don't have one specifically selected but I'm going to be able to easily choose something. Similarly for Q the subject is relocating pain. Read a book in a different spot. So basically every single time I pick it up I have to read a book in a different spot and since I primarily read books via audio I don't think it'll be difficult for me to listen in different places every single time I pick it up. So like I said I don't really have anything selected for this at the moment but I should easily be able to fit one of these books into that. All right y'all that is it for my August TBR. Pray for me because I feel like this is going to be very complicated and chaotic especially since I have several books on my radar for August that I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to feel about. So we're going to see how it all goes. Please let me know if you are participating in any of these readathons for August and let me know some of the books that are on your radar or if you've made it to this video and you aren't feeling chatty please go ahead and leave me either a like a violin or a music note emoji in honor of the violin conspiracy. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I can do. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Or if you wish to connect with me on any other platform, I always leave my Goodreads, Instagram, and IG threads down below. And I would certainly love to connect with you on one of those other platforms or in one of my future videos. Bye guys.